So we got off the ground with our first preseason game for the new season. And I want to ask you, did you watch the game? What's the impression um, from the event of the game? Now, I've got the reaction from the coach and a few more reactions to share with you. Uh, but if you have got reactions, please remember to leave them in the comment section. What did you make of the game? What did you make of the team that we put out? What did you make of the performance of the players? Please remember to share them with us here on United Today. It's always a pleasure to come your way. Aside the game, I've got some transfer news to share with you. Some moves happening. Um, some players are leaving. Some players are coming in. I'll be sharing them with you here on United Today. Also, there have been some new appointments that I would also make you know of it and why these appointments have been made to beef up certain departments within the club. I'll be sharing them with you. Now, do you remember this picture? So that's Joshua Zegzi and then Kobe Menu sharing some moments right after the England versus the Netherlands game. Joshua Zegzi has given us uh, the answer to exactly what they were talking about. Let's go for a quick break and on the break, I'll show you exactly what um, Joshua Zegzi said that um, Kobe Menu told him. And a few other things from the unveiling of Joshua Zegzi. Remember to hit the subscribe button. If this is the first time you're watching, remember to hit the notification bell as well. Please leave a comment. Your likes also helps us a lot. Please remember to share your likes here on this channel. We appreciate all you do for us. Thank you for always being with us. Let me make a quick turn around. Watch Joshua's exit. When I come back, I will tell you what happened in the game against Rosenberg in Norway yesterday. <music> The scene that you, yeah, yeah, there's a screenshot of you two chatting. He just asked me if I was coming. He asked if you were coming, yeah. and so you just winked at him. And like, yeah. I said, See you soon after the final. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, United fans, Josh here. Very happy to be here. Can't wait to see you guys. All right, thank you very much for joining us. This is United today. So that's Joshua Zegzi there trying to explain what exactly Kobe Mainu told him right after the game so let's quickly go into the game so Eric Ten Hag made some very interesting statements right after the game he was asked of his impression he talked about the standards and what he felt he wasn't so happy about the way we played and all of that now let's listen to Eric Ten Hag and what he said right after the game the result is very much secondary it's all about the fitness and preparation but is it still frustrating to, to concede right at the end? No, the result is not secondary. <laughs> but yeah, of course, we play pre-season, but at Man United, there's a standard, you win games. And definitely not lose games. Yeah. So if you can't win, don't lose the game, as we did in the end, last second of the game. Um, but of course, the performance is more important. And yeah, the performance that was below, uh, below standard. So that's Eric Ten Hag there. Well, he was talking about the performance not being good enough. And that the standard is not the standard of, of top football and now we are man united and we should perform better that's eric ten hagen what he said so what was my observation well um we started a game with um a few of the first team members about six of them era rambisaka johnny evans casemiro mason mount um, marcus rashford and i think hannibal major maybe we can add will fish to it because he's technically a first team member Majority of the other players were the players from the under-18 under and under-21 squad. So Ethan Whitley, um, Sam Murray, um, who again, um, e Ethan Williams, all of these players who are playing, Vitek was the goalkeeper on the day. Superb football that he played on the day. If you had your goalkeeper making a lot more saves on the day, clearly tells you that you're not playing well, your defense, defense wasn't so very much organized but it's understood it's the first preseason game of the season i've seen a lot of people overreact yes i'll state it overreact i'm sure perhaps it's event of last season that is haunting you but let's calm our tempest um even if you had won people would have said it's just preseason so if we've lost let's admit that it's just preseason and let's all be uh, at peace with ourselves but there are some few things you need to note the team we played against have already been playing throughout the season. This is their, their, their midway through their season. They've played about 15 games. So in terms of match fitness, in terms of match sharpness, they were ahead of us. Okay, so Rosenberg have already been playing football and, and, and they look solid and they, and, and, and they were sharper on the day than us. 
that we have had players who are coming back from holiday had just one week in training, definitely there will be some few issues. I'm not making excuses, but I'm just trying to paint a picture of what exactly we should expect in some of these preseason games that we are going to play. Remember, in preseason, you are building fitness, you are building your match rhythm and all of that. And you look at the constituents of the players on the day, it wasn't the full set. Players are on international assignments. You know, some, some left the competition early, so they've gone on holidays. Some few players have had to stay at Carrington because there's been bespoke fitness programs that has been designed for them so that it will bring their levels up. Anthony, Andre Onana, Jaden Sancho, um, Victor Lindelof, Ahmad Diallo, all of these players are still at Carrington and we're getting their fitness up. And as a result of that, we're not involved in this game. So in terms of team chemistry, you wouldn't see that. But we were lagging behind a lot more on the game. Rosenberg showed a lot more intensity. And I've explained to you why, because they've been playing. And our players, we're not getting their passes very on. We are not creating chances. We found it very difficult to get out of the blocks. And it made it very, very difficult for us in the game. So... I wasn't too surprised. Of course, it's preseason, so you are looking out for things. How good is our passing? How are we? How are we getting out of us? How are we getting ourselves out of some of the issues that we found ourselves last season? I mean, those gapping holes in midfield. How much amount of shots that we consider? Truly, we consider a lot of shots. We consider about twenty-two shots in a game. So um, a lot of people. Okay, I've seen people sharing videos or screenshots of the game statistics, trying to say that you see nothing has changed. Relax, cool your temper. We are just getting started. So no need for us to, I mean, put a lot more pressure on ourselves with regards to some of these things. But um, we didn't, we, we lacked the sharpness. We lacked intensity. We lacked that match rhythm to play. It's just the first game of the preseason and definitely we wouldn't look so sharp. Um, the fitness that's, we expect the team to get to isn't there yet. So that's where we stand at the moment. So it's not too surprising that we got here. The second set that came in um, was, was made up of basically under 21s and under, um, under 18s. So Habib Ogune, Harry Amas, um, Scalon, um, Reese Bennett. And it was captained by Toby Coyler, who is a player himself and Ethan Ennis are the players that really caught my eyes. Jack Fletcher was also in there. Now, Toby Coyler. We all know why Ten Hag really likes him. He was one of the players that caught my eye and I wasn't surprised that he was even given the captain's armband because it looks as if the coach really rates him and would want to build him up as a number six for the club. Um, so just keep an eye on him. Just keep an eye on him. He's one player that you should be looking out for. The way he, his understanding of his position, how much he's able to receive the ball under pressure. I mean... It's not a hype. I'm just trying to tell you my observation of him. And I'm not surprised why the coach is giving him a look at um, currently at the moment. So and he signed a new contract just last week um, to still remain with the team. So he played very well. He he had a very, I wouldn't say he played very well. He had a good game because we didn't play particularly well. It was quite drab and very boring a bit more from our part. We had to concede some some bad goal or a goal at the dying embers of the game and made things a lot more difficult for us. So these are just a few thoughts from what I've seen. Our next game will be in Scotland at Merrifield um, um, at Edinburgh where we play against Rangers um, on Saturday at 3 p.m. I think Ghana time or wherever you are. It's at 3 p.m. In Ghana it's 3 p.m. So I'm sure it's about 4 p.m. in the UK uh so make sure you make a date i'm sure by that time the fitness level will be building some of these key players would be available uh to come join the team so that we can i mean start taking off preparing before we jet off to america to play the rest of the game so that's just my thoughts from the events that happened yesterday so let's quickly switch to the transfers and what is really happening so lenny euro is still in the transfer we've made a proposal to Liu, and Liu have accepted our deal of over 50 million euros to sign Lenny Euro. Now, today, a man called Loic Tazani from the L'Equipe has brought an update in France. Now, what he's saying is that Euro is not motivated to join Manchester United at the moment. As I have reported severally, and as it's been reported everywhere, 
Euro's intention is to play for Real Madrid. The problem is that Real Madrid are not paying Lille the money that they want. And that is what is holding things at the moment. It has been reported that United have made a very firm and convincing deal to Lenny Euro, wanting him to come to play for the club. This is where it stands now. United have made a very convincing deal to the player, wanting him to come. But as it stands, the player has made his agent. According to Loic Tazani from L'Equipe in France, he's told his agent that his priority is Real Madrid. Real Madrid, on the other hand, are not willing to meet Lille's valuation, like I've said. They are not willing to pay more than £40 million. The reason being that the player has just one year left on his contract. And Real Madrid are trying to use their attractiveness to pull the player, that attractive pull that they have to get the player on their side. United is still insisting and is still trying its best to get the player because they believe they can convince the player to come play for us. Now, Fabrizio Romano also came with an update saying that everything depends on the player and that United's offer is still on the table. And that United's offer won't be on the table for a very long time. If United realize that the player is still dragging and has still not made a decision, United will draw the offer and then move on to other targets. But the player is supposed to make a decision as quickly as possible for us to know exactly where things stand. So this is why the issue of Lilani Euro stands with um uh, with a player at the moment. Florian Plattenberg from Sky Sports in Germany has also made the same thing. Now you know there were four teams involved, two have dropped out, Liverpool and PSG. They've still they've dropped out. It's left with United and Real Madrid. The player would have to make a choice. In that relay, in that in that regard, to 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 see which team he wants to play for, Florian Plattenberg further added that with regards to United and Matthias Delict, in the last seventy two hours there has been no talks. It's been quiet, nothing has happened. So, um, but the agreement between United and Delict still remains. But he's saying that. There's still lack of agreement between United and Bayern, which has been ongoing. But in the last 72 hours, United haven't established communication with Bayern Munich in relation to Matthias Delict. The player is waiting to see how things go. Um, the player wants to come to United. Like I've been telling you, the player, the club, both clubs are all willing to make this deal happen. All that is missing is United's agreement with Bayern Munich. If that agreement comes into f into force, Delict will be the player. It's quite interesting that the part, the, the, the area, the part of the the, the um, 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 of, of the team that we need reinforcement, the most still nothing has been done yet. But talks are ongoing. Talks are ongoing. Our defense hasn't been revamped yet. We still need our defense to be fixed as quickly as possible. You need the players to come in to be able to, you know, gel with the team before the season starts properly. As it stands, the only central defenders we have left in the team is Victor Lindelof, Harry Maguire, Johnny Evans, and then Lisandro Martinez. So these are the four defenders. Obviously, some of the players might leave. Harry Maguire, Lindelof have been touted as one of the players that would likely leave the club. Uh, not too long ago, we gave Johnny Evans a new contract. I'm sure a lot of you don't agree with that. But that's the situation there. We need to make those defensive signings. Already, UEFA has blocked our deal for Jean-Claire Todibo because, from Neil because you know the obvious issue. We, our club and OGC needs share the same owner. A new club rules per UEFA blocked that deal and Jared Brantway's deal is more or less dying gradually because Everton are holding out 70 million. United is not willing to pay. So this is where the defensive situation stands. What do you think? What do you think? Please share your comments in the comment section. What do you think about all of these? Please remember to share your comments in the comment section. Let us hear you. So that's it. On, with regards to outgoings, um, Mason Greenwood, uh, we I told you last week that a deal has been agreed with Olympic Marseille, although there are quite a few issues being with some few protests, the mayor talking, Marseille having backed down. The agreement with United still holds. DiMaggio is reporting that Mason Greenwood has finally made a decision. Remember, there are other clubs involved that wanted Mason Greenwood's um, signature, Lazio, Napoli, Juventus. Lutito, who is the president of Lazio, said that the other clubs disturbing him. He had made an offer to United, but the other clubs trying to usurp the whole deal. But as it stands, the player is leaning towards going to 
Lazio. This is where things stand. He wants to go. He wants to go to sorry Olympic Marseille, not Lazio. Olympic Marseille. So Dimazio is saying that um, Greenwood is going to give a firm answer to Olympic Marseille. So this particular deal happens. Scott McTominay has been attracting interest from where Galatasaray. Yes. One board member of Galatasaray said that they are interested and he's, 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 he's given an interview where he talked about their interest in Scott McTominay. But the question I ask is, if you, is, is, is a Galatasaray ready to make those financial commitments? Scott McTominay is a Scottish or a UK player. He is a Man United player with a very high value. I'm not sure it's going to cost more, less, less than 25 million pounds. Now, if you look at Galatasaray's purchase history, the highest they've bought a player for is not more than 20 million euros. So you ask yourself, how well are they prepared to pay the asking fees for Manchester United? He's an academy lad, played very well last season, scored a lot of goals, increased his value, has a price tag. But you ask yourself, can Galatasaray afford? So Galatasaray say they are in talks with the club and the player to see if they can work out a reasonable price for them to get Scott McTominay into their field. So that's also another quite interesting thing that you need to know. So that's that's it. Um, but let me um, end the club news with the appointment that has been made. So Jele Ten Ruela, um, Jele. Teng Ruela. I don't know how the Dutch people mentioned this name, but he's been appointed a new goalkeeper's coach um, to come join the club. Ericton Hag says that he's got some great innovations. He's got a new approach that he's convinced that he will help will help the team play the way the team wants to play, especially train the goalkeepers to play the way the team wants to play. So he's a latest addition. So the whole coaching setup has been has 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 been taken over by the Dutch guy. So. Ten Hag, Dutch, Rene Hake, Dutch, Ruud van Nistelrooy, Dutch, now the goalkeeper's trainer, also Dutch. There is no problem so far as they are performing. They are performing, we don't have a problem. So that's where things start. So you say welcome to the new goalkeeper's coach who's joined the team currently. Let me end with our summer series. Let me close it out. Maybe tomorrow on the podcast when we meet, we'll discuss a few things on the summer series. But uh, England failed to, call in, failed to win another back-to-back -back final back-to-back -back final losses. Gary Southgate, a lot of people trying to raise questions as to whether he's a fit any longer after building what he's built, but still unable to win. Uh, a lot of questions about his future. No clarification yet, but we'll see how it goes. But commiserations to our players, Luke Shaw and Kobe Mainu. Outstanding performance. In, 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 you look at Kobe Mainu's meteoric rise from playing the FA Youth Cup breaking into United, got injured last season's preseason, coming in against Everton, played in the FA Cup final, won, became a mainstay, had his England debut in a friendly, went into the Euros, played his parts, got to the final, unfortunately they couldn't win. Meteoric rise, an amazing talent. Serge Radcliffe says that he plays to above the age that he is, with the maturity of let's say a 40 year old, what a player Kobe Mane is. Commiserations to him. He looks so dejected. Very sad right after the game. Of course, they had lost the final. On the other hand, Argentina, Leandro Ganacho and Lesandro Martinez were champions back to back for Argentina. Lesandro Martinez was part of the team that won back to back. That's why he's holding these two trophies. Leandro Ganacho, that's his first. Martinez played all the games. And the game that he played in a quarterfinal that he was taken out. So that was the only game they conceded. So for all the games he played that he was on the pitch, they never conceded a goal. Yesterday, he was making some serious blocks to prevent Colombia from equalizing or taking the lead. What a player he is. We have our Martinez back and we pray that he stays fit throughout the season because he's very crucial to the way we want to play. And we pray that he stays fit. But congratulations to them for winning the Copa America. I think for the 16th time, yes, uh, what an achievement it is for the Argentines. Congratulations to these guys. So that's how I draw a curtain down on United today and our summer series. It's over. Back to everything United now. 
Uh, thank you very much for watching this episode. Tomorrow we'll be bringing you the podcast. The boys will be here. We'll be discussing a few more things. Everything, all the topical issues that's happening around the club will be discussed here when we come for the podcast tomorrow. So remember to make a date. Join us, be with us, and enjoy everything that we've put together for you here on this channel. I'm going to say bye-bye to you and see you on the next one. Have a great time. <laughs>